Hi, Raphael. Hey, Pauline. How are you? Hey, good. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from my ex actually from my office uh, in Israel, uh, based in Roshine. It's a small city near Tel Aviv. It's about 10 minutes drive from Tel Aviv, the major city of Israel. Oh, uh, nice. Sitting in my office, end of the day. Uh, it's a great time for a chit chat, right? Yes, it is. Uh, so. Amazon. Yeah, end of, end of the day for me too. You see, it's a little darker here than usual. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I, I was looking you up on, on LinkedIn a little bit. Let me share that screen with you. Here you are. Wow, well, that's nice. So I see you have a beautiful LinkedIn background picture. It's really nice. So it's like immediately you can tell what your business is about. And, you know, I see that it's shipping, you know, freight and sea shipping. Yeah. I love this topic of sea shipping. I wrote this long, long article about sea shipping oh, really? uh, on my blog. There was a there was a time when I was adventurous enough to try to do everything myself, like step by step by step. And eventually I realized it was so hard. So I have this 15,000 word article that I wrote, how I shipped nice. Amazon by sea. And yeah. when, when I had time, when I had time, I used to write a lot of content. Actually. Yeah, it's like the only long article I wrote. <laughs> yeah. it's, oh, it's been really, a while. It's really descriptive, right? Pictures and, you know. And yeah, and you know, so there were all kinds of issues. Like, you know, I had to choose which port is going to be when I'm estimating, giving, asking for quotes. So US LAX or US LGB. And then you, I Googled how far they are from each other, like 10 minutes. <laughs> you know, like all these things you don't know, you know, before you do it. Oh, my God, there was so much stuff. Basically, oh, wow. I am That's saying, nice adventure. yeah, like, you know, I had to deal with so many reps and oh, this was very, very difficult. So I see that you are related to do something to do with shipping and the name of your company is Unicargo. So are mm -hmm. you a freight forwarder then? Yes. Let me tell you, you know, give you a little brief. So um, I've been dealing with international um, freight forwarding, international trade, actually, since I was 21, 22. Um, that's more than 10 years ago. Um, and in 2015, I started Unicargo, started alone. And after being some years in the freight forwarding industry, doing traditional shipping, you know, ocean, air, but for non-e-commerce businesses, um, I found out that there was a very big gap, a void in the market for a freight forwarder or logistics company who talks e-commerce, understand e-commerce, understand the client needs. Again, back in the days, I'm talking about almost five years ago, there was almost no company who really understood an Amazon seller, like a foreign Amazon seller that he needs to ship his products from China or from India or from Thailand or Korea or whenever, Cambodia, to the United States, to Europe, uh, to Canada. And most of these sellers, you know, foreign sellers, doesn't have an IOR. They doesn't, you know, IOR is an importer record. They, they are not, you know, they don't live in the States. They don't, have, they don't have a social security number. They don't have an LLC. They are just starting or they are started and they need help with importing the products. They have no clue about import regulation, what is allowed, what is import duty, how much they're going to pay when it gets there, how do they get their products shipped, you know, whether they need it by ocean, by air, by express. And there was a very big gap in knowledge. Nobody really knew because from my experience, Amazon sellers, people who deal with e-commerce are non They are pretty new to international trade, right? They learn how to deal with Amazon and they... All of a sudden, they, you know, they now need to import, they need to manufacture, they need to understand quality control, they need to understand branding, marketing, and now international trade, shipping, logistics, importing. All that big knowledge started you know, to fall on them, and they really needed professional help. So I, I understood that, and I started Unicargo. Um, started alone. Today, we have over 60 employees around the world. 40 of 60? Them. That's 60? 60, that's 60, wow, yeah. that's now, a lot. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we kind of became very big um, compared to other uh, freight forwarder that is dedicated to Amazon. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we are based in Israel, but we really don't deal with any imports to Israel. All we do is country to country um, where Amazon based, basically. So we do a lot of imports to Japan, to Australia, 
to the States, of course. The, the United States is our biggest market. Canada, Europe, United Arab Emirates, Dubai, where we provide full service of, you know, shipping door-to-door, import, import, you know, import of record service. You know, if you need to import to Dubai, we can act as your import. If you need to import to Australia, you don't need to actually open an Australian business. You can use a freight forwarder who understands e-commerce and he can give you that service of acting as the importer for your product, delivering it to Amazon. Um, we have our own offices in China. We have almost 17 people working in China. Uh, we headquartered in Shanghai and we have another Shenzhen office. Um, we have office in Italy and Germany um, and in the United States, of course, uh, but the operational base is, base is in Israel. All the headquarters are based in Israel, and we have all these small branches, except from China, which is a big branch. Um, yeah, and what, about, doing... uh, what about Mexico and Japan? Do you ship there? Yeah, we ship to Japan. Uh, we can act as the importer of record in Japan. Mexico is, we don't do Mexico. Mexico is one of the hardest countries to import into. Yeah, you I gotta figured... have You got to have your own company. In Mexico, you gotta have your own customs broker in Mexico. It's very, very hard. And compared to the market size, it just doesn't worth to deal with it for us, you know, because volumes there are really, really small. You know, they don't, it's not like the US that where you have major volumes. Japan is getting bigger. Australia, people are trying it because it's easier. So volumes are nice there. Europe, bigger volumes. Canada, bigger volumes. Mexico stayed very, very small and very, very hard regulation wise you know so we just say hey it, it just doesn't worth it for us so we kind of kept mexico aside so basically we deal with every country that amazon has shipments into except mexico um japan is you know people really love japan we started shipping more and more and we if i look at the number we see increase of about 20 to 30 percent year on year you know on volume going into japan um i guess because the market Japan, Japanese people are very known for their e-commerce. You know, e-commerce is very well uh, known in, J- in Japan. People love e-commerce in Japan and people buy online a lot. And the market, you know, it's not as uh, saturated as the U.S. So if you have a good product, you can succeed very nice in Japan and become it becomes a very nice marketplace for you. So, yeah, we, we invested a lot in Japan. We give a lot of compliance regulation services. For example, you have toys um, or something to import to Japan or cosmetics. We're going to help you. We're going to tell you exactly what documents you need, what you know, test reports you need in order to, to import to Japan. And we're going to act as your importer in Japan. And we're going to do the whole thing you know, f- from picking up your, your cargo from China or from the States or from you, wherever you manufacture or buy your products. We're going to pick it up from wherever it is and we're going to ship it, whether by ocean, by air, express, any type of shipping you need, we'll do it into Japan, including um, acting as the importer for your product. And that's the, it's, it, the, the same goes for every base, basically every country where Amazon operates except Mexico. You know, um, in my audience, we have a lot of uh, beginner sellers who are just thinking of selling on Amazon or just thinking. And usually free forwarding and shipping is like the, you know, you just so scared That's of that a topic black hole it's a big black yeah hole. yeah just like so much information you got lost and so yeah, yeah. once they work like i've discovered through the pain and suffering that it's the easiest thing to work with free forwarder and then the one i work with right now i just email them that i have a shipment and then they deal with everything and <laughs> i just email me when it's there ready so nice. how much of a touch points you have with your customers like what's the process like once i establish the relationship with you how do i make an order and how what other things you will ask for that's, me? That's a very good question. Um, I guess you you build a relationship with your freight for you. You know, it's like you have a lawyer or you have a, you know a graphic designer. You build a relationship with them. They get to know what you need, what what kind of services you need. You know, what kind of services you after. They get to know your products. They know your regulation. They know your supplier. So things become become can become automatic very fast. For example, as you said, you just contact them, you have an order, they know your suppliers, they know your product, they know your market, they know your regulation. So it's pretty much automatic for them. So the, the process for us is once we onboard a client, for example, a client will come to us through website, through email, through a phone call, through WhatsApp, through a referral, and, or, you know, people come to us from many different places. They'll get to our pricing department 
Our pricing department will get their needs very briefly. Hey, what's your commodity? What's the volume of your shipment? What's the gross weight of your shipment? Where do you ship from and where do you, where do you ship to? When is the cargo ready? And they'll give them a quote pretty fast. Our model is to give, you know, try to give the quote as fast as possible. Cool. If you are, you know, if you start just starting production and you don't even know your final destination, we still can give you kind of an estimate to know so you can have, you know, a rough number of what your logistics cost is going to be like. Oh, know, this is so good because it was such a chicken and egg problem, you know, like the forwarder says, until I know the address, I cannot tell you a quote. And then I don't know the address yet until I create a shipment, you know. I so I want like, to show, yeah. show you something that we are actually developing and it's going to be sure. live in two weeks and you're going to love that. We kind of built... Um, we built a sh Amazon shipping calculator where you don't even need to contact the freight forward. It just logs in. I want to share my screen with you. Okay, cool. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Share, share. All right, here it is. Share screen. Uh, share. So you see it? Yeah. I see so that's the draft of the application. Oh, Basically, you're going to go there. You're going to tell us, hey, have you started productions? Because if you don't, if you haven't started production, you can actually give us just an ASIN or a competition ASIN or just put your unit sizes and how many units you want to order. We will do the calculation. We will understand how, what's the volume is going to be, what's the gross weight is going to be. You're going to tell us origin, where you ship from. So, for example, China. And you're going to choose an Amazon warehouse. Or if you don't have an Amazon warehouse, you can just put, just leave it as FBA warehouse. And as you see, It'll go to the next step. It'll give you kind of a summarize of everything. And then instantly you'll get costs for express by air, by, oh, by uh, ocean and by regular air. So you'll just have a, a, an estimate instantly of every type of shipment you're going to need. Um, and you don't need to speak to anyone. You can lock your rate. If you like the rate, you can lock it and start an order from there. Um, and we are pretty much finishing with it right now and it's going to be massive. I'm really excited about that because we have a lot of people with that we know who are just, you know, researching a product and they cannot talk to a freight forwarder because most of the freight forwarder won't know what to do because you don't have, you know, you don't have your master boxes. You don't know how many boxes you're going to have. You're not, you're not, you don't know what's the gross weight per box, what's the size of the master boxes. Yeah, so it's a new product. I don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. No, no. So we've developed a way because we have a lot of data, you know, for, we, we deal with over 4,000 shipments every month for Amazon sellers. We really mm -hmm. deal with thousands of shipments. So we kind of, we have that massive amount of data and we put our analysts into work and we kind of form the formula where we can actually give you an estimate that will be pretty much accurate even if you don't have your shipment details. You just need to give, let me know. You can go to Alibaba and see what's the product size and you're gonna tell me what's the product weight, or you can see it on Amazon. You put an asset into it. You're gonna tell me, hey, how many how many orders you wanna, how many units you wanna order, and we will do according to our data. We will do a calculation of what's your average order is gonna be like, as total volume and total gross weight, adding up, you know, packing materials, adding up the boxes. We do a lot of analysis, and with that, we can actually give you the price of shipping. And it's going to be pretty accurate. And wow, it's very, very it's, useful. What about things like, um, things like insurance or this import, uh, what is it called? The paper that you need to import? Uh, well, basically, in order to import a general product, you know, nothing special like cosmetics or medical devices, all you need is invoice and packing list from your, your supply. Don't you, you oh, I meant the, the bond or something like that uh, is called. Uh, yeah, yeah, you have an annual bond and a single entry bond when entry in the U.S. Annual bonds, it's only in the States. It's only for importing to the United States, bond, bond thing. Um, basically, when you ship with an Amazon, um, you know, with an Amazon freight forwarder, he knows that the new seller won't have an annual bond, so he'll already calculate that in, you know, in his quote. Again, if you know Amazon, if you know that business, we all know that a new seller... 90% of the time, he won't even know what bond means. So, yeah. not, so he'll probably won't have an annual bond. So we got that into account and it, it's already included in that price. Okay. Um, we yeah. understand that many of the new sellers don't have an annual bond and they need to, they need to ride on our bond. 
all right, we have a brokerage or license and we can actually legally import on under our bond for our clients on behalf of our clients. And if it's a big client, we'll probably use an annual bond. We'll issue an annual, annual bond uh, for him because that's the right thing to do. So you become an importer of record instead yeah. of me? Yeah. That is very good because then I can hide uh, my supplier information. <laughs> you, know? you can hide your supplier information. You don't have to pay for an annual bond. Um, you don't have to pay for a single entry bond as well because it's already an under an annual bond. So it saves, it saves a lot of costs. It simplifies things for new sellers, um, but we actually, if you're a bigger seller, we actually prefer that your product would be under your bond because that's the right thing to do. You know, when you, you're a big seller and everybody, you know, today look up at doing an exit, selling their business sometimes. So you really want to have all your documents, all your shipping documents, because when somebody will want to, uh, you know, uh, conduct a due diligence to check your business to value how much it's going to worth and how much he needs to pay in order to buy your, your business. He will want to see your shipping documents and how many uh, import duty you have paid, what's mm -hmm. the value of your shipping declared to customs. So once you grow big, we actually push people in order to have their own bond and import under their name. It's the right thing to do. Back to your question on how the process goes. So once a client comes, he goes into our pricing team, he gets a quote. Once he's happy with the quote, he wants to go on. Then he'll go into a customer success manager or a, a one contact, as we call them. He'll schedule a phone call with him and he'll say, he'll greet him. Hey, thank you for choosing our services. My name is blah, blah, blah. I'm going to handle your account. And he'll start asking him questions about his business. What's more important for you? What do you need? Uh, faster service, lower service? Are you more concerned about price? Are you more concerned about um, speed? He'll learn about his products. He'll tell him, hey, for this product, you need this and that. Um, or for this product, you don't need this and that. And he'll, he'll take all the details of his supplier. He'll contact his supplier. And it, it kind of makes things, you know, much easier for him. As you said, for his next order, that guy, he'll go there. You know, the client will go directly to his customer success manager instead of going to the pricing thing. And he already knows his suppliers. He already knows his product. He already knows what he shipped before how much is, you know, he paid before. So you can actually give him that same service or he'll basically start to learn his needs, you know, shipment by shipment. As you said, it's building a relationship. The more shipments you do, the more you get to understand, know your freight forwarder, um, and we get to know more about the client. So today, most of our clients, most of our regular clients, it's all automatic. You know, they already know their quotes. They already have their price list. Uh, for our biggest clients we build their price price list so they have set, set prices they don't even need to ask for prices just go hey take it from shendi or take it from i don't know take it from this guy and ship it to amazon los angeles and you know it's done they get automatic updates they get a login into our system where they can see all their shipments online what's the status of each shipment the documents are directly in that system so it's a pretty it's a pretty easy process once you become a regular client what about the prices? You know, with my current forwarder, I sort of started trusting them and I don't get other quotes at all. I just trust her. I know that in Q4, they rise a little bit. And so what are general seasonal tendencies? Do prices change a lot through the year? Is it really more expensive in Q4? Yes. For, so for example, prices of shipping are affected by supply and demand. All right, there are big, there are much bigger demands in Q4 and even before Q4, like you, you start in September, bigger demands coming, you know, higher, and that's why prices are going up. Air freight today in China, we're looking at the end of November, air freight in China will change every single week. All right, so the price in China for air freight will, pro will probably change every single week during this day. Ocean freight, it's pretty stable. The, the change velocity is every two weeks for ocean. Whether it's a full container or less than container, shipping line will update the rates every 15th of the month and every 1st of the month. That's where rates will be updated according to fuel. According, they call it GRI, general rate increase, if they want to increase. And if it's going to be a decrease, it'll just decrease it. Okay. So... Air can change, you know, during really peak season, like 
you know, before Chinese New Year, November, uh, January, 15th of January, rate for air freight will, gonna be, will change every single day. It's, it's that hectic. Shipping line will still keep on changing every two weeks, but on, on ocean for, you know, during peak season, like quarter four and before Chinese New Year, it's not about the price, it's about the space to get the space on the ship. You know, sometimes people, you know, there are times like before Chinese New Year start, you know, like middle of January, where it's not even about price. I, we sometimes will say, hey, don't talk about price. Let us find the space first because there is no space to go out of China. So. Wow, well, that's high, high <laughs> demand. That's, Things that's can awesome. get very hectic during, you know, really peak season. For us, Chinese New Year is it's the biggest peak of all, you know, it, you know, it's much bigger than, you know, uh, November or October. You know, December, it's for us, December is after the peak season because people don't ship by ocean in December because it'll be late for Christmas, right? It, it won't arrive anyway. So for us, peak season starts in, you know, October because that's where the big shippers are, are shipping, you know. And bigger shippers, the biggest clients are even shipping on August and September. Yeah, because I know it has to arrive like it has to arrive October fifth or after in order to have good inventory performance index on Amazon. So yeah, yeah we're all calculating for that date. Yeah, it's not only Amazon. We have clients selling on many different platforms, like on their own shops, and I don't know how. You know what? You have shopkeepers, you probably know numbers, but we work with some of the biggest sellers in the world. We're talking about sellers sending 40 and 50 containers every month, you know, selling 30, 40, 50 millions a year, million dollars a year. So some, you know, it surprised me every day. I, I, I get surprised by the size of this industry and that, you know, that selling community, it's just crazy. I see clients sending crazy amounts of you know of cargo and obviously they are selling it and again to be able to ship 50 60 70 containers every single month full container loads 40 high keep containers you gotta yeah. sell you gotta sell a lot i see you know? same 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 sellers i mean similar sellers i see on my app right because i see people's accounts tick 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 you know some yeah. sellers like in one day he sells a profit because i'm a profit app so i know the profit makes like hundred thousand dollar profit a day and that's every day you know and that's a huge load on our server and we like i just amazed just like you said every day i'm looking like oh, right. wow some guys are really doing a good job with amazon right. yeah it's just just crazy and i love to see it that you know it, it gives us you know it, it shows us where this industry is going to and you know starting in 2019 at the beginning of the year we started to develop more products so for example, we started our um, warehousing division where we manage people's stock, you know, people who doesn't want to send directly to Amazon, they want to send it to a warehouse and from there maybe deep send to Amazon whenever they need or they work on Shopify or they need a warehouse to keep it fulfilled to Walmart um, and, and we... Sh so today we also manage warehouses. We have six different warehouses in the United States that we, we manage stock for people. We have a warehouse in Japan, in Australia, in China, of course. Um, in Europe, Amsterdam is pretty big, UK. Um, so we started to go into other aspects of e-commerce logistics, like fulfillment and distribution, reverse and prep, logistics. And the labeling. Uh, prep, we, we do some prep. We do some prep, but mainly in, in, in the United States and the UK. We do prep. We do, we do have a lot of reverse logistics, handling all these customers' returns, you know, doing inspection for the returns and, you know, keeping it back in stock or sending them back to China to suppliers to get refunds and, and stuff like that. Because, again, once you work with, you know, some of the biggest sellers in the world, they have more demand, more logistics demand, like warehousing, returns and, and fulfillment. Lately, we started dealing with crowdfunding logistics, which is one of the most interesting topics I've ever seen. You know, Kickstarter, Indiegogo projects where yes, somebody yes. raises $1 million and now he needs to ship 20,000 units out of China to all over the oh, world. Yeah. So we started to deal with fulfillment. One unit each. Yeah. Yes. It's a B2C basically, a product to, to, to an end consumer. So that's very aspect, you know, that's a new product that we offer today in our company. Um, and, you know, e-commerce, that, that, that the name, that the, the 
the subject e-commerce is so wide today. You know, people can sell on, there are so many different marketplaces in Europe that many people don't even know, but these are big marketplaces and e-commerce is just booming. It's growing by the day. You know, it's becoming crowdfunding. It's e-commerce, you know, it's people building marketing campaign based on product they have in their minds and they raise one million, two million, three million dollars. It's just crazy. Before they even, you know, invested in a product. They, they just, it's just an idea and people pay for it. And it's, it's just brilliant for me. For, you know, I think I just, it's just brilliant. Think about it. You get $3 million in sales before you even manufacture <laughs> one unit. But Kickstarters have this problem with delivering on time or what, what, what the logistics they promise. Is the problem. Yeah. Yes. Logistics, you know, 90% of people doing market, people doing Kickstarter campaigns, 90% of the people there on their first time, they lose, they lose a lot of money on the logistics because they do a lot of mistakes. And that's something we are trying to master right now and give a lot of cons- consulting and compliance um, about that. You know, because you, 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 you need to distribute all over the world. You have Europe where you have VAT and, and, and taxes the issues and they give kind of an all-in price and then they see that they lose on the ship. Hey, so I sold this product in Kickstarter for $200 a unit. Now, I offered free shipping. I said it's going to include the shipping now, but they didn't think that they have now 20% import VAT on their mm. products. So now they have $50 only on import duty. Hey, do I put it on myself? Do I charge my client? I already promised them free shipping. It's a mess. It's just a mess. So a lot of people actually losing money on their logistics on their first campaign. If they go on to a second campaign, they, they, they learn from their mistake. But we see that a lot of people actually do a lot of mistakes on those type of e-commerce adventures. Um, and that's why we've decided to go into that and, you know, actually educate people. And again, we already started doing some campaigns with people and we've done these projects before. I'll probably by mid next year, once I'll have about 20, 30, 40 projects under my belt, I'll start, you know, teaching and lecturing about doing crowdfunding logistics the right way. And it's a very interesting topic. And that's another uh, aspect in e-commerce that is growing very fast. That's a great idea because like none of the forwarders even yeah, have a clue that. about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it's nice that you find niches that are still unexplored. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's great. That's one of my, you know, one of my, um, one of, one, one, that's one of the best things that, you know, one of the most things I like to do. I really love finding that places where, People don't really know, and it's it's a new area, and it's booming, and there are there, there isn't a lot of experts in that, and I love to become that expert and then give it away, um, you know, give that content, give the knowledge. But basically, that's how I built my business. We are, you know, we became a very um, we are not a very big company, but we are not a small company. But I actually built this company without putting one cent, without investing one dollar all about content. I, the way I started the company, actually back in 2015, I went into all these Amazon schools, Amazon academies, people who are teaching Amazon, all these influencers, and I told them, hey, you teach people how to sell on Amazon, right? You tell them how to find a product, how to rank it, how to take photos of it, how to deal with keywords, PPC, blah, blah, blah. But you have no clue about the international trade. You know, you have no clue about ocean air, um, import regulation. Let me come to your course. I'll build you videos. I'll I'll educate your clients. I'll do webinar. I'll do it for free. And they all loved it. And we actually have shipping modules on over twenty different Amazon schools and academies today, nice. where we have content. So that gave us a lot of traction, a lot of inbound leads, without spending anything except from our time giving value and content and teaching people. So basically, we do a lot of videos on how, what is an ocean freight, what is what is incoterms, what you know, everything related to logistics because people don't really know it. And we go to these schools and academies, and we actually enrich their content, right? We give them another free model, so we make their course much better. It doesn't cost them anything, and for us, you know, it's it's a lot of uh, very good um, traffic. So it's kind of a win-win situation, and that's how we. We build the company. 
Great oh. strategy, yes. Proves that you are very smart. <laughs> Great. I, I don't know, very smart. It just being in the right place, you know, in the right time five years ago when this industry just started to, you know, pick up and become, you know, very, very big. Um, and yeah, we were, we were in the right time, the right place, doing the right thing. And um, being as the CEO of the company, that's what I try to, you know, that's what I try to educate my managers and my employees, you know, about giving that value because giving value, giving information, educating the client, you know, it puts you in a place where they see you as an expert and, you know, we have people referring other people to us because they have a good, very good service and they enjoy working with us. And I don't like to brag, but I think we are the biggest Amazon sh dedicated shipping freight forwarder in the world that are Western, that are non Chinese. Chinese has much bigger companies because all the volumes are there. But I think today we are the biggest Amazon freight forwarding company, the Western company, right? And dealing with thousands and thousands of shipments every month, you're looking at, you know, almost 100,000 shipments a year. So we've seen every possible problem. We've solved every problem. We've seen, we've seen it all. We've solved it all. You know, I've never sold on Amazon because I don't have the time. But I think from hearing all these clients, talking to all these clients, I know all about their problems. I know their business. I know about hijackers. I know about how hard it is in Amazon. I know about Chinese going in and killing the market. So we know everything. That's what we do all day long. We just talk to sellers and bigger sellers and smaller sellers and huge sellers. And we are kind of there some way. They're a psychologist where we heal their problems and we got to help them with their problems. And you know how it is where you go out of stock and, you know, it really can kill your business. So we've found all these methods and all these tricks and all these hacks to, to help them. And we are connected directly to Amazon systems and we have our own team on Amazon inbound team to help with problems. And, you know, sometimes Amazon will lose your shipment and we, we found ways to help within the system, within Amazon to help our clients with that. So it's pretty, you know, we, we kind of developed that skill dealing with the Amazon server. So I think that's the secret of our, of our success, actually, because we live, that's what we do for a living, you know, shipping goods for Amazon so that's that's what we do for a living and that's why we became so good at it and I think that's why you know that's that's actually that's actually why our company become became uh, successful that's what we need as Amazon sellers we need that type of thing like just a we close our eyes and everything is solved for us automatically automatically so uh, how can yeah, people contact you uh, if they want to work with you, what's the best way they can contact you? Well, just Google Unicago. Um, it's all there. You can log into our website and we have a quote application where you can actually put your product and, you know, get, um, you know, we get it directly into our systems. Um, and if you log into our website, you'll see here on the right corner on the top, get a quote right and just have oh yeah oh yeah get, a quote so yeah. get into a page where you just put all your shipment information and it goes directly to us and then some of our uh, pricing team will get back to you um it's oh nice smart. not your option this uh, is great <laughs> i like that easier ways of yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause sometimes we know that people don't really know so we give them that way out of hey don't worry we will help you with that so Okay, great. Yeah, we'll put everything and we'll just get back to you. And once we have more information, it's actually easier for us. Facebook, just search Unicargo on Facebook. We are pretty active there. Um, we have a great blog posts, by the way. We put a lot of information on our blog. Um, and so yeah, LinkedIn, you can search my name. You can contact me directly. You can contact the company that's, you know. Posts in my groups. Okay, anybody recommends a forwarder? Probably you're in the comments. Yeah. And here and here, can everyone recommend? That's probably people recommending us, I guess. Um, yeah, here's, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, I can recommend mine. Working with them almost three years now, shipping to FBA. 
Yeah. This is cool. So I guess they're all recommending you guys here. Yeah, I immediately wow. need yeah. one. Says, yeah, Unicargo. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess you have a good word on Facebook. Then this is cool. You got a check mark. <laughs> cool. That's, uh, um, that's you know, work being working in the e-commerce area in the e-commerce space. You got to give top-notch service because if you don't and if you do mistakes or if you give shitty service, everybody will know it. As you see on Facebook, if you do a mistake, people will kill you on Facebook. And yeah. you've seen it. <laughs> you see sometimes post, hey, don't use this folder. They fucked me up. They did this. They did that. Um, it's really scary. So <laughs> you can't do any mistake as a service provider working on the online environment. If you do a mistake, everybody knows about it. And if you do a good job, everybody knows about it too. So... You gotta make sure you do a good job, and that's how you know we we call it social proof. When somebody asks, "Hey, I need a freight folder," and somebody else goes, there, "Hey, I use this and that service provider. They are good. That's social proof, and that's very strong." But if the forwarder goes, you know, somebody looks for a forwarder, and if you if you know what's going on in the Facebook posts where people look for forwarders and all these Chinese freight forwarder, hey, I'll contact you. Use me. Use me. It's it's a bit it's kind of become like a marketplace and I don't really like that. So as a service provider, you can't really recommend yourself. You know, it's much more stronger if somebody else recommends yeah, you. It is. You know, it's, 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 it's that social proof, you know, so. Yeah, that's why um, I keep, I, I join as many Facebook groups as I can for Amazon sellers. There's like 200 I've joined. Yeah, and then I cool. use it as a search engine. I just put in whatever I'm looking for, like Unicargo. And then you get feedback from all the groups. What's, who's saying yeah. what, you know. This is not available on Google search. And just, yeah, you know. yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for coming to my show today. It's been very valuable. Thank you for having yeah. me. Thanks, Rafael. Thanks, Paulina.